On behalf of Finlandia Foundation National, I am welcoming you all to today's presentation. Today, author Michael Norskog and photographer Aaron Hautala talk about their purpose and experiences in creating the book, The Opposite of Cold, which is about the, the history, culture, and practice of Finnish sauna in the upper Midwest. I'll give you a short introduction of uh, Michael and Aaron. So Michael is an attorney, editor, writer, legal journalist, marketing consultant, researcher, legal analyst, and freelance journalist, among others. His work has appeared in numerous publications, and uh, he was a contributor to a Prairie Home Companion. He grew up in the heart of North American sauna country and lives with his wife and three children in Wisconsin. Aaron is a communications expert, specialist, and he is a mountain biker. As I was searching info on him, I found a lecture that he was giving called Aaron Hautala on biking, the economy, and crazy ideas. I think that probably covers everything about him. So with more than 25 years of positioning uh, businesses, organizations, and communities front and center, Aaron uses his communication experience to create identities that are simple to understand, easy to buy, and hard to leave. He has been featured on MSNBC's uh, Your Business, and he's recognized internationally for award-winning uh, strategic marketing, public speaking, and community advocacy. Aaron is passionate about helping others create communication plans and deliver powerful communication using a proven process he personally developed. Okay, Michael and Aaron, the floor is yours. The virtual floor. Thank you very much, Anne Marie. And we're really honored to be invited to be a part of Sound Week um, for the foundation. This is 10 years, 12 years after our book came out. It's uh, really a culmination for us because the Finnish American community just showed so much pride and, and, uh, and help at so many turns for us on this project. Um, so uh, Aaron, I think you can, if you can share screen there and I'm not seeing the, uh, here we go. Here's our PowerPoint. And you hear me fine, right, Aaron? Yeah, it looks yep. good. Okay. So I, I know a lot of you are, are um, familiar with this book and um, we're very proud to, to say uh, it was published in 2010 by the University of Minnesota Press. It went into a second printing last year and it continues to sell real steadily, which is just, it's just such an honor. Um, it's something that we kind of started out with um, probably not envisioning this being where we're at, you know, 12 years from then. So thanks for attending this today. and. Um, I think what we're going to do basically is, is talk about our experience. We have a, a PowerPoint that we did together quite a few times and, uh, and on our own as well back when we were going to libraries and such once upon a time. And um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the process of putting the book together. And there are lots of little, uh, you know, lots of information about various aspects of sauna. I, I, and we're hoping, we're planning to reserve quite a bit of time for comments at the end. So please, if you have personal anecdotes or, or questions, you want more information or you want to share information, I mean, the sky's the limit there. Um, but um, I, I'm the author of the book and um, that's my name there. And, and I appreciate Anne-Marie, you're using the true, the Nordic pronunciation, um, the, my last name, those of you who don't know, you probably do know, means Northwoods, and we managed to sneak that into the title of the book as well, the Northwoods Finnish Sauna Tradition, which basically refers to, uh, you know, a, a big part of the upper Midwest in the United States. Um, thank you for the introduction, and it was really great to hear. I, you know, it's 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 rare for me to hear all those things put together, and um, and it sounds great to me to hear that. But one thing I'm extremely proud of now in, in the wake of having done this book, I, I grew up with sauna that, at the building I'm leaning against, which is on the cover of the of the book up in Brimson in Northeastern Minnesota. And it was at a family cabin and, and I've had, you know, hundreds and probably 
into the thousands of saunas there over the, over the years, maybe not thousands, but many hundreds anyway. And I'm very proud to say now that um, I also have a sauna at home and um, I live in a, in, on a rural area on a little farm in Southwest Wisconsin, an area called the Dripless region. And we have a, a spring fed trout stream that runs through here. And I am, I've become a, a very dedicated pretty much every week practitioner of very hot sauna and uh, very cold dip in the creek afterwards. And uh, so I'm gonna turn it over quickly here to my, my colleague, Mr. Aaron Hautala, who was an extreme pleasure to work with. And, um, and we have not, you know, in this times of social media, I mean, I, we're in touch with each other that way, but we haven't really had a good conversation for a long time. So you're gonna get that as well today, just Aaron and I catching up on, on things a little bit. Sound irrelevant though. I hope so. If not, just cut me off. But I, I am Aaron Houtel. I was the photographer behind the opposite of cold. I mean, the backstory on me back then was I grew up with sauna. It was uh, every part of our life on the Masabi Iron Range. It was like a family member. I said, you know, Wednesdays and Saturdays. And at that point in my life, pre-18 years old, it just seemed like everybody did it. And then I moved off of the Iron Range and I moved not that far away. It was only about three hours south in Brainerd. And it was the first time in my life that I met people that didn't know what sauna was. <laughs> and I was like, wow, this is different. Or they had different versions of what it meant. Or they didn't think it was cool. Or they didn't think it was something that was as relevant and prominent as I think the group on this call has today. And from that moment on, when I realized that, and this book provided that opportunity was I wanted to be able to document the sauna, obviously the photos, because I do words. And that's why Mike and I working together was such a godsend in a way that how it feels to me, you know, and to be able to show these saunas as what they are, you know, not just a building, but an actual experience. And that was when we got the word from Todd Oriola, our editor at the U of M Press, that we were going to be able to do this. It was one breath. This is the dream of a lifetime. Second breath. Oh my goodness. Now we got to do it. <laughs> and and kind of the slides that follow from here, Mike has the, the very much grounded on fact, you know, stories, which are super imperative to why this book has done so well. And then I will provide just like in a, in a hockey game, maybe some color commentary along the way of what was happening behind the lens that you know wasn't in the books. So with that, we're just, shall we keep on a moving, Mike? Let's keep on moving. And now for the show. And that's just what I said. You know, after 12 years, I probably could take that slide out because I always repeat myself. But anyway, well, let's take it, it away. Well, it gives us a good chance to catch our breath. So um, we talked a little bit about hockey and some of you may have been logged on there in the beginning. And I definitely wanted to just give a shout out to the, to, uh, to all my Suomalainen and friends and uh, for that, that gold medal victory. I'm a big hockey fan. I'm not a really a big everyday ho hockey fan, but I love to watch Olympic hockey. And uh, I follow that tournament every time and to the women with the bronze. And um, I'm getting back to sauna here quickly, but what one thing we wanted to capture here in, in taking on this book was, you know, sauna as really a regional entity in this in this microcosm of, of in the middle of the United States, where like Aaron, I grew up saying sauna and knowing what this was, and then having people correct me when I lived out in the larger world. And um, we wanted to just take a look at it. And what we had really where we came from and the subjects we had was this tremendous home rank advantage because we just new people, we knew the things there, there, but the culture was rich. There are just were so many great examples. And for me, um, we, we had first done a, a magazine piece together, Aaron and I had that profiled the sauna at, up at my cabin, which is a beautiful old cedar log building. And it was worth preserving. And, and my brothers and dad and I had preserved it. Um, but um, that was the single focus of our magazine article. In the book, obviously we were looking at much larger things. And um, I was familiar then, you know, there with became quickly familiar with the work of David Salmala, the architect from Duluth, who's uh, just envisioned these. 
It's, someone is not mark. muted muted there it's in the background. Really if you could oh, mute. Thank you. Uh, so David's work is just to me stunning, and um, this is an example of it here. This is a sauna outside of Duluth. Happens to be owned by a couple who the the wife uh, and her daughter or her sister and I went to kindergarten together. It's a very small world up there, but um, this building just really, really caught my attention because I couldn't quite figure out what it was. I mean, I knew it was a sauna. I saw the the you know the journalism write up of it, and it's been profiled in a kind of you know a couple of magazines, and and it just kind of shifted the whole scheme for me, and it was just very very intriguing to see that and let's let's go to the next uh, slide here Aaron hold on one second there you go air traffic oh, control sorry. I'm cheating I'm going back there you go there. so more of our uh, home rank advantage here the slide we're going back to here in a second this is the Honka homestead up in the upper peninsula of, of Michigan Finnish territory you know Finnish I shouldn't say Finnish territory, Finnish, a place with a lot of Finnish American settlement. And this is a, a beautiful example of a, uh, a homestead sauna there that, that survived. That building in the center with the, the roof there is, is kind of evocative of the Samala building in a way. And it also just shows the range of what we had at our feet here to deal with. So we were, you know, we had a lot of material to, to delve into regionally just to, to look at buildings. And at the heart of this is sort of, this is a book about vernacular architecture. Uh, one thing that I really benefited from, from working with Aaron right from the beginning is how to get people into the, the picture here. And so it's also, you know, the book is also ethnographic and about, about culture and about cultural pride and practice. And, you know, not so much about health and everything like that, but really about the, the people using these buildings. We can go from there. The one thing I'll add to this one, Mike, is yeah. just the, this was like one of the first times, at least in my life, where I was able to walk into a land and see the courtyard just the way it would have been. You know, like when grandfather Gus Tautula came and, and he built a courtyard. But by the time I was old enough to understand it, half the buildings were gone. But this one allowed me to see, OK, the house, the road cellar, the barn, the horse. Uh, whatever I don't know what that one is to the left Mike but in the sound and then how in, how right centered in the between was really the pivot of a sound and how important that was and going back to this sound like they smoked meat in that sound they did bloodletting in that sound there was so many things that they did in that sound it was far more than just a place to get warm and cool off it was a, it was very much epic to the cornerstone of what it meant to their lifestyle and then the last thing I'll say, and then we're going to go to Wisconsin, the next vote, Mike, is that ladder on the roof. I still love the ladder on the roof of the house to put out the fires, should they happen, you know, just because it's such an interesting thing to see, because now you don't think of that. And last thing is, we have a house here in Minnesota, and believe it or not, we have patterned our courtyard off of the Honka courtyard, Mike. So if you ever want to come see the new 21st century version of the Honkas, it's not the Hautulas. Next slide. So this next slide is at, uh, this is a farm up in Northern Wisconsin, um, somewhere in, around uh, Olu or Iron, Iron River, that area in there. Um, an interesting building in that it's really truly an old farmstead building that has a sauna where you see the, the chimney protruding there, as well as some other architectural forms there. And one thing I really came to admire from my research for this book and just from the discussions and all the family Tales is um, is kind of the tenacity of 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 Finnish Americans in homesteading, often in a part of the world where, you know, it's like by the time Finns were in northern Minnesota, and it, it was there was this there were these these attempts to to sell farming in northern Minnesota, but really it's about you know you can grow your own potatoes and hay farms and such. It's never really been a great agricultural area. But I always, at least to me, the lesson I got out of that was that sauna was just this integral part and uh, of that experience. And you know, you hear the the myth. I don't mean myth in the sense of that it's not true. It's very true that often the first building built on these on these sites was a sauna. Um, it's a myth in the sense that it's just 
it's really this this central principle that we believe that that you know forms around these homesteads and it uh, it just to me uh, uh, who lives has lived in this northern climate most of my life i just really love that central idea of having this warm warm place that at the center of a farm yeah and then the only thing i'd add to that mike is like when we did the schedule, Mike did all the scheduling for these photo shoots and they were, they were all over and they were all coordinated. But what the one thing we didn't have is the luxury of a, like a wrangling crew or to figure out yeah. exactly what time to be there. And throughout all these photos, it was pretty much when we walked on the site and I'd summarize my photographic opportunities blessed by light. Cause it was like, we got out of the car at this moment. We didn't plan to be there. It was just half happening and it was and again and again allowing me to capture the photography in a way that produced the emotion versus it just being a structure and you see it in that last when the sun's kissing the western that was a probably a february yeah, i remember that was a very cold day and you know and we were trying to get in three sites a day in fact we we shot that david samala earlier that day and i know that was in february that uh, yep. that place in duluth very cold day so one thing that the uh, I really got to give props to the University of Minnesota Press um, is that they they saw the potential in this book and really encouraged us to go to Finland as well. Um, they really liked what we'd done. We put together a little brochure actually in, in wanting in, in trying to get them to publish it, and um, they seemed to like what was there and saw the potential for it. So they had gave us a, a nice advance, which gave both of us with young families. And a lot of obligations, we were able to travel to Finland. And this is in retrospect, you know, now vi revisiting this, this slideshow, it was really a magical experience for me. I went to graduate school in Stockholm and I did live in Alaska for a while at one time in my life. And I've been to Scandinavia a few times. I'd seen the midnight sun and been there in the summer and just been dazzled by it. But I got to go there with Aaron, who's, whose job it is, is to find good light. And we, we, we weren't limited, let's just say that, to three sites a day in, in Finland because the days were so long. So we were over, you know, over the over the, the midsummer holiday, we stayed at this farm up in um, oh, it's like it's well, we were on our way up to to uh, Iveskula. I think it's I can't remember the the nearby city, Seljoki maybe, but um, we stayed with Kaius Nimi, who is an editor at uh, Helsing and Sonomat, and uh, I had met him in the Twin Cities, and he invited us to come to stay with his family for midsummer, which is. We didn't know, I mean, we kind of knew it was a big deal, but anyway, it was it was really a wonderful thing. And we had a little trouble finding a place open to sell beer to us, I believe, Aaron, <laughs> on that day. Everything was closed. But this is an example, Aaron, and you should talk about this one a little bit, because this is you kind of, you know, you're up at midnight here, I think, taking Yeah, shots I think this was 11.30 p.m. You know, usually you don't have light like that at 11.30 p.m. And uh, the, in the foreground was the original homestead Sabu sauna, the smoke sauna, which was, if you ever try to photograph one of those, good luck. They're basically pitch black if you're on the inside. It takes, it takes some time. And then the, the, the structure in the back was a sauna plus a guest cabin, right, Mike? If, yeah, that was an up, right. That was a contemporary one. That building had been updated, but the Sabu sauna was original. And that sauna in the background, we were actually able to take a sauna, which was cool. We actually had Vita in the sauna and it was a three seater because they're three guys sitting right next to each other. It's very close. That's what I remember. And yeah. then this photo, I was talking to my wife while I took this one and why it's etched into my memory. She told me that we were expecting our next child at that time and that she was pregnant and that next child was Ella and that child is now 12 years old. So that it, it's interesting to look back and kind of see where where I was and where we were and and what was happening. Hey, thanks to Jeff. That's in Lempila. Thank you very much, <laughs> nice. Jeff, for posting that. So this is this is just us late at night here, uh, out getting our feet soaked in dew. I think is that the uh, is that the moon on the horizon in the background yeah. or the sun? The yeah. moon. Still had just, enough light at three in the morning to shoot. Just which lovely. Is crazy. Yeah. So this, we, you know, we, we wanted to get the full range here and we did visit the, this is the sauna. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with it in the Kalio neighborhood in Helsinki. The, the missed opportunity, I remember this now, Aaron, is that the, the tattooed hipsters who were sitting outside there all, 
all kind of scrammed when you got your camera out. Um, they did. I didn't want they, to be in the shot. Like that, that's the only <laughs> thing that could have made this better. But it was really fun for us to just kind of go and experience Finland as a, a microcosm of sauna and kind of compare all of our notes. I remember actually, and we'll see a couple shots from the, the sauna society. But I, I picked. I was there. I, I went through. Uh, spent some time in Sweden and did a little research there first. And I picked you up at the airport in Helsinki and with jet lag and whisked you right to the sauna yes, society you did. for sauna. You whisked me to the next photo. I, or no, that wasn't the next photo. This was a pretty big day for me. I, this was, uh, we were in central well, Finland at the time, but growing up on an iron range, the name pronunciation was pretty accurate. The hockey games, the announcers, how tall, they got it right. But when I moved off the Masabi range, it, it quickly transitioned to Hadala, Hachachala, Hawadala. Just the name pronunciation was un, un, unknown. But this was a sign in Finland with my name that I later learned was pointing to a cemetery. <laughs> and it was just kind of interesting to learn maybe some other name, you know, the definition be behind your name isn't always what you think and the other thing that's cool is just up the road from here I was actually able to go on the homestead where my grandfather and great grandfather came from on Nermo on Hautalanti Lane which was um, from uh, getting your roots in your own life going back to where it began was a big moment because I always heard about it but it was really cool to actually see it this is where this was my first photo in Finland Mike when I was still we go trying to get over the jet lag and and that doesn't seem like a big deal like Aaron why are you so upset about a flight to Finland but at that time in my life I like didn't even like travel to a different part of the state yet more or less go to a different country I was so novice to traveling so to be in a new country it was it was wow anyways you could take it from here Mike yeah there, it was uh, it was a great first stop and you know, in retrospect, maybe my, first, my favorite stop there, we were just uh, welcomed with open arms and uh, given honorary memberships <clears throat> and had a really fantastic sauna that day. That was, you know, I, if I was pressed to say the best sauna experience in my life, it might have been there that day in, in some ways because we just got to experience so many. My, own, my only Savu sauna experience ever was there that day. And um, <clears throat> just to fantastic facility and a beautiful library and and just a, a really really great place to see you know the the reverence the national reverence love this shot yeah, and that will be i mean from uh like i show this photo around here still and people are assuming it's like way out, out in the middle of nowhere and these people are seen by no one except for maybe those homeowners on the lake over there but what I like to point out is this is right in the city harbor, basically, of Helsinki. And it's like, it, you know, people were in kayaks going right by here. So sauna isn't this, you know, unknown thing. It's very much part of culture. It's what it, it's part of being Finnish. It's Finland. And obviously it's spread way farther than Finland to many cultures. But for me, it kind of solidified that, you know, as a Finlander, I'm not because where I was living at the time, I'm not awkward or weird for thinking this is cool. This is really where it's at. And what's been fun since this book came out is even just this month, the amount of people that are getting on board with the theme behind sauna from a culture point of view in our own country is incredible. And it feels like this was a precursor to what's even happening now. Back to you, Mike. So what, let's roll through the next you pretty quickly here because we're about probably 15 minutes from where we want to go to questions but this okay. is uh, as some of you may know Oliver Alto at his property up on Lake Payena in, up in the central part of Finland just a beautiful building I only noticed um, just sometime within the last five years or so I, I haven't looked at the book too often and I looked and I noticed that's a rowan tree the and what we call Mount Nash here which is that's right in front of the door there. And I know that's sort of a special, um, you know, if it has a special affiliation in Finnish culture is a lucky thing to plant near saunas. Let's go to the next one here. So we, um, 
we're you know obviously looking at real saunas, but um, is that all, come all the way through? There it is. We also uh, my kids were all crazy about the Moomin, so uh, I had to go to Moomin World on this trip, and of course it it fit with our plan because there was this um, AirSats sauna bathhouse out on the dock there. And we even got the, the snooze medican uh, snufkin character to sit out on the end of the pier and fish a little bit inside the uh, from the, the sound of pier. I just switched it to the slide that shows the interior of the Moomin sauna, which has a questionable door. That's a lot of heat up. <laughs> You want me to keep moving it, Mike? Yeah. Or can you not even see it yet? No, I see it. Now, keep we're, moving. now we're back on White Lake in the summer with some guy doing a cannonball. Now we're back to our um, home rink advantage. Exactly. So the cover, you know, the cover shot, and we'll see another shot of that one, um, is uh, of the sauna up at my family's cabin in Brimson, northeastern Minnesota. I'm not of Finnish American heritage. It was, it belonged to a Finnish American family. And then my Swedish grandmother, French Canadian grandfather bought it back in the early 60s when I was just brand new. And so I spent my whole life up there. This is not our cabin, this shot here, but it's one of seven or eight in a row. And um, we had, and it didn't dawn on me until we were actually, you know, I didn't really want to focus on these so much. And then I realized, wow, these are a treasure trove. So one of the, the great things about having this book deal and, and being in contact with folks there is, uh, we got in touch with um, Professor Arnie Allen, and I know he's on the call here today. Um, and he came up and had a look at all these. And he's he's never one to turn down an opportunity to see historical finished buildings. And this is just an amazing collection here um, of, of buildings. Seven or I think there's eight properties, and seven of them either have or had saunas. This is our good friends, uh, neighbors, Ruth and Mo. They're from Two Harbors. And, they had this place up there. I want to point out quickly that that Finnish flag sticking in the tree there I got from FinFest when it was in Duluth, which was a wonderful thing to happen in the middle of working on this book because I got to meet several people there. It's such great presentations. I know I met Jim Curti there for the first time, for instance, and he was really instrumental in this book. And yeah, that's me I'm jumping out the end of the dock and you can see my son sitting on the porch there. You see Cole there in the middle, Aaron? You remember that? Yep. On to the next one here. Aaron said we had a big models budget, but I think, I don't know. What we'd look <laughs> yeah, so here, but uh, here, so no this budget. is, yeah, <laughs> this is the cover shot from the book. And, um, and we learned from the U of M press actually that they said we need to take the, uh, the nude figure who's walking in. We had a couple of volunteers who, had, who were up in the area and, and they, they were willing to, to be the, the sound of models for the day. Um, but the woman on the left there was, was, is not on the cover. She was erased out because I guess some of the bigger booksellers, uh, one of them said that we wouldn't get end cap space with a, 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 a naked, with the naked buttocks on the cover. So <laughs> that changed. Uh, th this, and let me talk just quickly about this place. Um, Sorry. This is again, a, a sound of that. Just notice the, you know, this is the classic dovetailed end work there. And, and actually uh, when Arnie Allen was there, he, he clarified that this building was probably reassembled from a, a homestead building in the Brimson area. There are, or, or was a lot of settlement there and a lot of skilled, you know, log building makers up in that area. So back in the 90s, it had, it had kind of sunk down on a mud sill and uh, needed some replacement of the bottom stuff. But we were amateurs, but we got, we got it done and, and fixed it up and made it good for another couple of generations. And it's a hot sauna, right, Aaron? It is a hot sound and you take them incredibly hot. So don't make fun of Mike for anything because he'll put you in the sauna and he'll, he'll show you who's boss real quick. Uh, the next few slides were as a photographer, one of my favorite magazines was National Geographic. Usually when I say that, a lot of heads nod. It was an amazing publication, the photos, whatever. But they always showed people in an interesting way and I wanted to connect people to the sound experience. And I don't know how fast these slides actually transition on the internet here, but to capture the jumping into a lake after sauna was another one of those experiences of, okay, we have to show this. We can't just have a building and have heat without showing what we actually do as part of it. 
and then I'm just going to go back to our scheduled, regular scheduled programming. And this was a big moment for you, Mike. This was, I mean, for boss both, but this was hearing. This was the holy grail of, uh, for us, was to find a working Savu sauna because I, I had kind of, you know, called around and asked people whenever I had a chance and they would always say, oh yeah, so-and-so had one there up in Biwabic and it burned down or, you know, it was, and so anyway, at some point I got a tip that, that John Sari had one and, and I'm sure a lot of you know John Sari at, and uh, he taught at Northern Michigan University. And, and so when we did our big, our big uh, Upper Peninsula research trip, we'd spend a few days up there in uh, putting the book together. And um, he was, was gracious enough to come out and meet us and, and fire that up for us. And I know a couple of cousins, Finnish cousins of his had come over to assemble the Kiowas there for him and, uh, and just help him kind of with the dynamics of it. And I just have always loved this shot. He really, he showed up ready to, to shine. And um, it's just to see that authenticity in, in North America is really, really a thrill. And then it was pretty, I mean, it was interesting just taking a photo within the sauna as the smoke came up because it's easy to forget there's smoke in there and you, you stand up too high and you, you get smoke in your lungs and you, you remember, but we just wanted to show, you know, smoke coming out because I had a lot of people that didn't understand. They like, why would you take a sauna with the smoke in there? And while they didn't, they let it actually vent out. But we also learned that other things were in the sauna that didn't like smoke, including some large spiders. I think on my screen right now, that's actually actual size for once because it's about seven or eight inches. It's wide. that big but now. Yeah, well, it was a monster and it let me get a nice and close as I wanted to be to it. But yeah, it's, didn't you, it's, you, you named it Toivo, if I, if I remember <laughs> correctly. I might have. And this, this was the setting of the sauna, which again, you'll see a consistent trend is like people put the saunas in the most amazing visual spot. They just didn't go, there's an empty corner on the lot for the most of them. It was like, here's the preeminent spot on our property. This is where the sauna goes. And it was cool to see that across, you know, international lines and state lines. If anyone has any tales, you know, that's one of those things. If you have any tales of, uh, of sauna, the Sava sauna experience in, in your family. I'd love to hear about that when we go to Q and A. So the timing thing that you knew, you mentioned with the sunset. This is where it really sh turned in our favor. We this is on the just uh, east of the Houghton Canal, you know, and headed off of Lake Superior into uh, the Houghton Hancock area there. And or actually, this boat is headed right next door. But I think Jim Curdy had tipped us off to this one that was right on the water. And, and Lake Superior is a big, plays a central role in this book, uh, whether it's truly acknowledged or not. You know, it's, it's there. It's this cold center of, of what we were looking at. And so I knew this was, this was a fisherman's property there, a uh, commercial fishing family that had this. And when we went to photograph it, this fishing boat is coming off of Lake Superior. The timing couldn't have been better. We didn't arrange with anyone to do that. And it gives the photograph so much more context. And, um, you know, that just was one of the, one of our lucky moments there. And the next one is Madeline Island, I believe. And it was, that yeah, was this is a, another David Salmala sauna. And uh, I actually got there. I, I, I stayed at you. This is one of the rare ones you did on your own, if you remember. Oh. And I went there, um, Actually, I think it was on the way back. I, I went to, to FinFest. Did you go to FinFest too? We went to the FinFest up in, in Houghton Hancock that came after Duluth. Yep. And um, on the way back, my son and I stayed here. I know the folks who, who own this place. So we got to use this sauna. It's a pretty good dash. It's a pretty long dash down to Lake Superior from here, but that's just a fine place. Oh, and the interior of uh, the sauna was at least for, for my kind of style is, is what I really loved about a lot of David Salmola's sound is the windows, the integration of the inside to the outside and the texture of wood, tile, brick, and kind of the most important thing I love is the glass door on the fireplace so I can see the fire. And I'm proud to report that after 12 years or 10 years of having this book out, both Michael and I have our own saunas now. 
If everyone wasn't on mute, I think they'd be applauding, but we'll yeah, get we to that one. <laughs> the Grand Marais, was, Grand Marais. This really was the money shot here. This this is up near Grand Marais, Minnesota, and uh, the sauna was built as part of a, a course, a timber framing course at the North House Folk School in Grand Marais, which is such a wonderful institution. And um, and so I was doing some scouting up there at one point. I found this place, and I thought, wow, that's it. And Again, you know, when it came time to finally get there, when you were up there, we were there together that day and to have this pancake ice out in front on Lake Superior really plays the contrast nicely there. Uh, it was a beautiful setting. And I could still hear that ice grinding against itself, you know, just yes, that. It was a beautiful it spot. Was an amazing warm. It was actually warm, even though you know, there's a lot of snow, it was getting late in the season. And, and you knew in this picture, like, we're fortunate. <laughs> we're fortunate to be here at this moment that on was behalf a good day. of what we we're attempting to For pull sure. off. So we're kind of coming right up on the Q&A. So let's, let's see if we can breeze through a couple more here. Yes. There's I the like that one. I mean, that's kind of how I felt most of the time. It was go, go, go. And I mean, this was our, this was a weekend heroic effort across all over the place. This was the end of a day that started before sunrise in Kokato, when you <laughs> shot the the you know like what is what is commonly understood to be North America's oldest oldest sauna in Kokato, that was <laughs> right. We we wanted to be there for first light because it was exposed to these. So that was shot at sunrise, and then this is in I think Sabika or Managa or something. Nope. About fifteen hours later, I think we did three stops or so. In <laughs> so that was a long swing through the Finnish Triangle and beyond. And look at that q and a i think Perfect. our timing's pretty good i'm gonna stop sharing so people can see full-fledged us so i'll check out chat here and thank you from dave great images if anybody um you know wants to just chime in i think you can uh, unmute and, and do that or if you want to whatever say you'd like to say something in the chat or just ask a question in the chat please do yeah, hi, I'm Paul Homme. Um, hi, Paul. My, uh, my father <clears throat> was a minister uh, of the Congregational Church in Palo, and he built, uh, helped uh, in building the uh, Brimson Church. So wow. hearing those names, of course, uh, they left there in 37. So uh, I wasn't born there, but my sister was born there. Uh, and they moved to Los Angeles. Now, you can imagine most people wouldn't think about saunas in Los Angeles, but he had a, we had a sauna wherever we lived. And uh, uh, usually they were built into a garage. Like we had a, we had a bigger house later, a four car garage where one of them became dedicated to be at a sauna. And whenever people came over for dinner or whatever, they always came for sauna too. So uh, I was in Los Angeles growing up with a sauna culture in a place that was very warm. But that didn't matter. Uh, my brother and I and threw the steam on until it was hot as it could be. Uh, and but then afterwards, uh, we had to sit down and cool off while my father brainwashed us about his views on life and politics or whatever. And then there was a fellow whose name was Kauti. He was a mechanic. Uh, he had a mechanic shop, but he was very good with uh, making the ovens. And so uh, County made the ovens for the Fens there who wanted to. And then there was another settlement up in Reedley, California, where my dad was good, went once a month to service the church there. And of course, again, he was involved with the sauna building there and having the sauna present. And even if you build a swimming pool, there was a sauna next to it. And so I have a sauna in my house and uh, we heat it up every morning just to have it also as a warming hut. <laughs> nice. Nice. So, I love that that aspect of it. <clears throat> but yeah. no no dipping in the LA River afterwards or all no, the no. <laughs> We never had any of those opportunities, but uh, we still had big pails of water and throw them on our heads after a shower yeah. and that kind of thing. But well uh, that, that yeah. yeah, that's great. That you know, and we're very familiar with that area. There were several subjects up, you know, my family's cabin is up in Brimson and uh, Yeah, I heard that you say that. Yeah. But, yeah. And and we were uh, in, over in Markham. There's a there's a historic property there 
etc. So yeah, lots of fun stuff. I actually recently asked a question on a, a Two Harbors History group. Um, just put out the question of people's memories about um, sound is down on South Avenue and Two Harbors, which is which is the the one street that's kind of closest down to the harbor area and was a, was a noted as a Finnish American neighborhood and. Um, it was just there were so many great stories and there were a couple of you know kind of quasi public saunas there and uh, a lot of people had saunas so that's mm -hmm. that's great. I see another question here there's one question here and it says will you show the interior of your sauna again. We didn't have the interior of either of our saunas there Aaron. Do you I think I think they might be asking the one that I said I liked that kind of inspired. Oh yeah the that interior. one very good. Oh right there yeah, so, so this, this is, isn't my sauna but it's one like my sauna this is a david somala design it's this is on madeline island and um yeah he he's uses he's used brick in several designs and and uh and then the the open you know that look it's a really you, you i don't yep yeah, go Did i don't, you have I don't remember it, in in i i I got your book a long time ago. It sounds seems like to me, and I don't remember when you were in Finland. Did you get a chance to go to Sauna Kula at Murame, the Sauna Museum? Yes, we did, and um, we've got it. There's a couple of pictures from there. Okay, good. Murat Salo, are you talking about or? It's in it's in Murame. It's the same little town that that Harve is based in. Oh yeah, no, we didn't make. It. Well, yeah, we did. I'm trying to think. <laughs> the reason. <laughs> The, the reason I'm asking is um, when I was there, they they had three uh, Savo saunas running that you could use, wow. and um, that's one of the one of the places that I've had a chance to use a, a smoke sauna, and it was r really a ton of fun. Um, I'm sad to say that that museum has been taken apart, and I'm, I'm, I think they're working on reconstituting it somewhere, um, a different site. But yeah. um, that, that was an amazing uh, day for me, an amazing uh, visit. Uh, yeah, and we were there. Is, can you, what's the Finnish name of the museum again? Do you remember? Sauna Kula. Okay. Sauna yeah. Kula means sauna village. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a, there was like a replica of a World War II era sauna there, I remember. And yeah, right. we were there. And there's several pictures in the book. From right. that experience. Aaron, that's where you have the picture of the, there's like a, uh, some sort of a elvish person that, you know, it's like, I think you actually took a picture of a fairy while you were there accidentally that showed up. In one of your pictures. Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah. yeah. It was like, you looked at the a picture, photo and, like a person and then I got the negative it. and there was a person in it. Like there was no person when I took the photo. And then in the photo, there was a person. Ripley's, believe it or not. You got more questions, Mike. They're yeah, coming in no, like we'll keep going you through. Got a, I mean, there, got so. Kimo's raising his hand. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the questions, everybody. Uh, how difficult was the editing process? Did you find you had more material than you could include in the book? Um, no, that I think that worked out pretty well. It was my vision for this was a coffee table book that was heavy on text, but that only really, you know, it only I think it was about forty-five thousand words or something, which isn't really a lot of. A lot of text, so there wasn't that much, um, and uh, but it was my first experience writing a book, and I had done some magazine journalism and wrote wrote some longer form, you know, three or four thousand word stories. I like working that way, but um, but it was daunting for sure. I think to me, the point where I, I hit the wall, where my where I, I clearly realized I do not have Sisu, was when I got to the uh, indexing part of do, doing the index and my computer crashed and I lost like a day and a half of work. And, uh, anyway, I went out of sauna and I felt much better later. And I, I, you know, Aaron, you mentioned him earlier, but Todd Oriola, who is no longer at the University of Minnesota Press, but he was there and he brought in a lot of great Scandinavian American type titles. And he really was a huge supporter. He, it was just a lot of fun to work with Todd. Um, anything to add there, Aaron? No, I, didn't. I mean, you the had, next you know, question. I remember you had quite a bit of photo editing kind of back and forth with the printers in the long run. And, and you know, 
I thought, oh, all he needs to do is take pictures. He has such an easy job. And then I remember you had well, a hard, lot of- The hard part of the pictures was just making sure they looked good. I mean, some of it was naturally ordained. But then yeah. like the interior of saunas are not well lit <laughs> for some reason. And, you know, I, I had to light them in an appropriate way so that people would go, wow, that, that looked enlightening. That looks hopeful. And not, why are you sitting in a dark room? You know, I mean, that was kind of the whole concept and the artistic side of it. So here's a question from Olivia. Did you focus on the sound of design and construction, the cultural elements of sauna or both in this book? Can you speak about what you chose to focus on? So, you know, really it was about vernacular architecture, really looking at these, well, not just old buildings, obviously, contemporary, some contemporary buildings, but really kind of tracing the roots of it and and seeing why, uh, but then, you know, following through into the cultural elements as well, and really getting people into it and people's stories and why sauna was important to them. Um, if I can capture that in a nutshell, I think it would be, you know, to, to look at sauna and, and try to really figure out why is this a very culturally particular practice that survived the melting pot? You know, why is this something that everyone knows this word sauna from Finnish and so many people in northern, you know, in, in the northern part of the Midwest, and now, of course, everywhere. I mean, people love sauna. And why, why is this something that survived? I think that those answers are probably self-evident, but um, I know us, though, uh, me and, you know, a lot of people I know from that part of the world feel a, a particular pride in having these things that kind of that um, reflect on our winter ability, so to speak. So, Yeah. You have a raised hand from the sauna Sherpa. Uh, let's see. Why don't we go to that sound of Sherpa in chemo? Are you, I, I'm trying to remember where you may be. I think we may have communicated on. Anyway, go ahead, chemo. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, just a short note about the sauna kula or sauna village. Uh, as as you probably know, it's uh, the whole. What well, all the saunas were collected by. Mr. Risto Wolleapia, and they were collected from different parts of the Finland. So basically all the uh, parts of Finland are represented there in the form of smoke sauna <laughs> or sauna uh-huh. sauna. And now they have moved to Jämsä. And it's the village is operated by Suomen Sauna Kulttuuri RY, which is a Finnish sauna culture association. And they have bit over 20 saunas there at the moment and nine of those saunas are in can be heated so so they are they have been operated last summer almost every saturday and then there has been some other special locations and the target is to get most of the saunas in in heating, heating conditions so the, so that you can heat it Heat it. So it, it's it's not a museum. It's really a like a place where you can enjoy and experience different smoke saunas from different parts of Finland. Would so you say, was... Kimo, that you do you have a distinct preference for smoke sauna? Yeah, I do. It's a, it's the ultimate. Yeah, everyone yeah. Should, should experience it. It's it's so different. The, I think we steam. need to go back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, don't you think? I feel like this is content that needs to be focused on. I, I feel a return trip. <laughs> yeah, the, the heat is so gentle and there's a lot of air and uh, mm. wow. the he, heat is also different. You know, it's uh, it's uh, it's hard to, you have to experience it. It's, it's, it's hard to describe it in, yeah. in words. Yeah. Well, I, and I find in general, any sauna with a large rock mass is very different than one with, you know, independent of heat. It's just a big rock mass makes such a, a big difference. Yeah, that's true. Thanks. Thanks for chiming in on that. That's good to hear. Um, next from Jeff, speaking of the West Coast, are there saunas of note in Astoria, Oregon, by any chance? I'm sure there are. I recall there are were many fins in that area. And I've, I've been to Astoria before and that was when I always, you know, I'm from Northern Minnesota. So I, I would always notice 
finish names on street signs or business names and everything. And I remember when I was in Astoria, um, I'm sure there is a sound of local sound of culture there as well. And I don't know if anybody else online um, could, if you want to chime in and speak, speak to that, um, please let us know. But uh, I don't know, I, like, is there, for instance, an active public sauna in Astoria? And, and I know Portland is becoming a real hotbed of, there's a couple of, of good commercial operations going there now, but hmm. yeah. Not to mention Minnesota, you know, that is a good opportunity here to just briefly address that. You know, we, this book kind of came out at a time when there was definitely a huge appetite for kind of just uh, something that validates that this is a real important part of our culture. And there's just been so many things that have happened since then um, in our neck of the woods. And actually there's an upcoming, this upcoming series, you'll see it on some streaming channel this year called The Perfect Sweat with Mikhail Oland who uh, wrote a wonderful book called Sweat back in the seventies and wrote the blurb for our book. Um, he's produced a, 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 a TV series about sweat bathing traditions that's about to come out. Um, in the upper Midwest, in the Twin Cities area, there's this, uh, you know, the, I guess, 612 sound of this co cooperative with a trailer sound of that goes a lot around to a lot of places. And now um, Justin Juntinen up in, in the Duluth area is just one of you know, many manufacturers moving on to this. Uh, we saw the Kuma folks up in Tower there that they're doing really well. It just seems like I follow them on social media and that's a go-to brand for sure. Aaron, you have any uh, thoughts on that? Finley, oh, for me, <laughs> that's, that's what I, I mean, they were able to provide I mean, just the, the sound of that has all the light wood and the, the windows and the stove and the window on the stove and just everything that was essential. And I mean, usually people are, to me go, well, well, just go build it yourself. But if I were to build something myself, it'd collapse and probably kill me because that's not what I'm good at. But for folks that need, you know, a like I could just buy that and it'll show up done. Uh, there's some amazing options that are there for you that, you know, you don't have to do it all yourself. And I'm not saying you shouldn't, if you can, you should, but if yeah. you can, you have options now. And that's how I have a sauna. And I'm very thankful for that Finley sauna. I um, have built, I've built mine from scratch really. And kind of a, you know, just from, you know, just building the basic building and, um, but trying to, you know, with a limited budget, not really buy everything retail and just, and, and I, we bought it, my wife and I live on a old dairy farm in Wisconsin, had a lot of old boards and everything, some, some really good resources. So I've made a point of doing it that way, but here I am probably eight years into that sauna and I'm still finishing details on there. So there's something to be said for getting, getting it off the rack. So we have a, we have another question here. What does, this is from Dave. What does someone pay to go to a public sauna and how long do they stay? What do they sell besides time in the sauna? Um, so, you know, a lot of times you, there's like massage type, you know, at, for instance, Cedar and Stone, which is down in the waterfront in Duluth, they manufacture them, but they also have this one site where you can go. I think it's for 90 minutes. I, I couldn't even... I, it might be $50 per person. I'm not sure, something like that to use that. That's a wood-fired sauna on the shores of Lake Superior. Um, they offer aromatherapy and usually they'll have someone who does you know, some sort of body work as well. Um, it's something that's definitely you know, on the upswing. I know one opened in Grand Marais recently. Do you know that, Aaron? Someone's got no. a sauna business on the north side of Grand Marais right on Lake Superior. It's, you know, it's like a <clears throat> place with several cabins, so. Cool. We have a couple of people in the in the queue here. We have Katarina, Ellen, and Nils, and Frank. Uh, so let's start right. with Katarina, for example. Um, oh. Yeah. What do you want? To, what, what do What do you want to know? <laughs> I, I saw you in the queue, like you had turned your microphone on. So. Yes. Yes. Correct. No. I just wanted to say that in uh, Astoria, yes, there is a sauna, a public sauna. I don't remember the name of it. Uh, but here in Portland, we have uh, two uh, good saunas uh, called Loul. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, so they are supposedly very good. Yeah. It's good to see that. And of course, I mean, one of, one of the fun things for us was, 
you know, there's there was there are still some of the older commercial saunas in the in the upper Midwest. The one that, like for instance in Marquette that was still operating and, and Ely, the Ely Steam Sauna, I went there on a Saturday. I made sure to get there for I'd never been there before. So I got up there for a sauna one Saturday night in the middle of winter and that was a great experience. Um, thanks, Arnie Allen, and for clarifying on that, uh, yeah, on the commercial sauna in, in uh, Grand Marais. And yeah, thanks, Katarina, uh, for, for sharing that. I figured, do you know the one in Astoria, is that kind of a, is that held over from, from an older business? Yes, I think it's an old building, at least. And yeah. uh, um, I, I remember seeing it, but uh, well, yeah, that's it. I've seen it, but, wow. That is uh, something to go to, but no, I have not been there. I don't remember the name. We have also here um, Finlandia sauna, uh, uh, building saunas, uh -huh. and, uh, and uh, that is amazing to have. Um, so there are many saunas in Portland area. Frank, Frank Eld has uh, some knowledge on the Astoria sauna. Frank, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, uh, the Astoria sauna right now, well, it's for several years now, it has been closed and there's been a lot of talk about uh, in the past about reopening it, uh, but there's been some difficulties, I guess, in uh, cost uh, effectiveness and a few other things, but the building is there. It's a, it's a beautiful building. It's, uh, the last time I was there a couple of years ago, it still had the uh, sauna sign on it. Uh, so the building is still existing uh, but it hasn't been in operation for several years. Uh, the other sauna, and you just mentioned it, that's a public sauna that's a lot of fun, is the one up in Ely, yeah. uh, Minnesota. I've been in that one uh, uh, a couple of times, and uh, th they're only open on, on, on certain days, so if you plan on going there, if you're in that area, check ahead of time, but it's, it's worth it. It's a fun sauna to be in. It is, Frank. That, you know, one thing I found interesting about that, and, and it must, maybe it was somewhat novel for you too. The, the heat deliveries there, you know, is this steam pipes to this radiator and it operates at a quite low temperature, actually. You wouldn't think you're gonna really have a sound experience. And I really did, I was satisfied. That was a great experience for me. Well, a friend of mine, uh, yeah, uh, she went into the, the ladies uh, part and she didn't understand the system. Uh, fortunately for uh, me, when I went in, that there was a guy sitting there and explained it. Well, my friend just pulled the cord really hard on that uh -huh. one, and she just got herself cooked out. She ended up running out. So it can get pretty hot in there if yeah. you uh, put enough uh, water on that steam radiator. We got a nice, Aaron, you got a nice picture of a fella in there, if you remember. It uh, yeah. was really cool. Yeah, and uh, that's that's a classic place. My son is in college up in Ely right now, so I uh, oh, okay. follow yeah. that that closely. Well, th thanks for chiming in on that. And, um, you know, I could ask you here quickly, Frank, too, and I, I didn't catch your 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 uh, presentation the other day there, but I but I would have asked about the Cocado sauna. And uh, did you have you ever found anything older than that? I haven't. Uh, no, no, I have not uh, found anything that that we can prove historically uh, is older uh, than that one is. You know, assuming that their their dating and their provenance is uh, provenance is correct on it, I that's yeah, uh, that's that's one of the oldest. The Holy Grail would be some building left over from the Delaware settlement or something. You know that. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, is... I've I've scoured <laughs> that area and and uh, you know there's the, I don't believe there's any saunas left in there, but I found my Holy Grail uh, two years ago down in Tapiola, you know, south of Hancock. Uh, because I've been looking since I've been doing the the, the uh, documents documenting of finished buildings, I've been lo looking for and totally unaltered, not touched, uh, Finnish Savo sauna, and there is one there. I found it two years ago. Uh, it's in not really good shape, uh, but the the QS is uh, and it's kind of collapsed in, but it's original. It's not been. Uh, added to or bolstered up. And uh, in fact, I talked to a couple old Finns there uh, who had as as teenagers. So it wasn't 
you know, 50 years ago, I guess you'd say, 60. They took saunas in there when they were teenagers, you know, Sabo saunas in that in that sauna. Uh, unfortunately, the benches are missing out of there, but the rest <laughs> of the sauna is there. Yeah. You know, to my memory, I think John Sorry that that's how he came across his, that he moved the sauna he has to his property. And um, I don't remember if that was in that immediate area. Um, Anne Marie, I just want to acknowledge she were over or I could, I'm happy to stay and answer more questions. I have freedom to do that, but uh, do you want to chime in quickly? And Yeah, um, I saw uh, Niels wanted to say probably something and I saw actually John Sari unmute himself. I wonder if he wanted to say oh, or great. chime in. Uh, John, are you there still? Or? No. I have, a, I have a quick one. Yeah, Niels. Thanks. Um, awesome book. Um, Thank you. I've been I've been building these things for about thirty plus years. I'm based in Vermont, um, and as you are well aware, there aren't many good books that we have, at least in English. And yours is really a great a great piece to have. Um, and the second thing I'll mention for people on the East Coast. Uh, Portland, Maine has a new public sauna that's pretty interesting. It's very modern. Um, it's called Washington Bath. It's in the city. It's in a very urban setting. Um, I've only been once uh, back in October. They've sort of been going through soft openings because of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. But if you're in Portland, I recommend uh, giving it a try. It is a very interesting um, all in all, pretty well done. I, I would say I give it a B plus. <laughs> My wife is going to be in Portland next week, so I'll uh, drop that uh, recommendation to her. You can have her go on a mission for you. <laughs> she she, she married you. into sauna obsession, and she's a she's a dedicated practitioner. Thank you both so much. The book is amazing. Thanks, I appreciate You're your welcome. comments so much. I think we're to the end of uh, everything there. Thanks. Frank, for, for your comment there. And uh, it's it's just really an honor to be, I, I just uh, really kind of glowing from the, the list of folks I'm seeing here today too. We're both really proud of this this book and to have it you know, be received with such authenticity and, and appreciation has been really, really an honor for me. And um, and like I say, we the, the rubber meets the road because we do have our home saunas and we're, we're practitioners. So I, if anybody has any, information um, there. Someone's looking for Frank for your contact information. I don't know if you want to share something in there. Uh, that's from Kathy. And if anybody else wants to chime in again, I'm free for a while longer if there are other questions. The only thing I'll add is uh, I was mentioned that I'm a mountain biker, which is a true story. And due to the passion for sauna, we've had a lot of um, new lodging come on board here in Kaino. It's like a micro resort. It's like the mom pop resorts, but for 2022. And they're, they're really small, they're really cool, but they also have saunas. We got two saunas now back on the Cayenne Iron Range that aren't public because you have to be guests to, to use it, but it's a major leap forward in a, a place that used to have sauna, but doesn't currently and now does again. So it's fun to see kind of a whole different generation of people getting into this one thing as a way of their active recreation life too. Yes, certainly one subspecies of public sauna too is Airbnbs with saunas, you know, yeah. where people can go and have it under their own control. And frankly, that's that's a, a very, you know, that could be a nice aspect too. Some people prefer privacy and to do it at their own pace and everything. So that's, I'm sure, much more available than ever. I know Glenn our back, because some of you probably know, and was in the program yesterday. He, I remember him advocating at one point that that Airbnb and their app, they should have a sound of click box yeah. there, so you can find those quickly. The uh, I agree with that. Have have a sound. Liability insurance at that point. <laughs> yes. Well, you got to get your sound a writer for sure. But exactly. or some instructions, like you have to follow all the instructions. Uh, yeah. So you are not liable for somebody burning their. And so, very good. Thank you to, uh, for both of you, and thank you uh, to our audience. I think we are uh, adjourned. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.